So, you know, if you take the, uh, the step that I'm taking with it is, is there the same opportunity for providing um, supplemental um, support, financial support for purchasing um, product on exchanges? So if you take the example I've, been, I've cited several times with people here uh, over the last day or so, you know, if you th think about a $300 premium on exchanges, and you have a person who's at between 100 and 138 percent of the federal poverty uh, level, uh, so that's that's a eleven thousand five hundred dollars to call it sixteen thousand dollars a year. Um, if they have a three hundred dollar a month premium, two hundred and eighty two dollars of that is paid for by the federal government, subsidized. So they all they have to pay is eighteen dollars. Well, if you're making twelve thousand dollars a year, can you afford eighteen dollars a month? Maybe you can. Maybe you can't. Say you can't. Well. We could set up a foundation, and when I say we, I'm talking about multiple provider organizations, because you can't really control it. You need multiple parties participating in it. And they would fund the $18 a month for somebody who needs the coverage. So that concept of setting up a foundation to provide premium support is the last thing that I'm gonna talk about, and that's what I'm gonna spend most of my time on. So. Yeah, more specifically, would there be any information? I know we kind of talked about what you're talking about in general with those. Is there anything like from those that you could offer to others? Like what if they're going to consider, you know, looking at sort of their own plan related to the exchange piece? I've talked, in, in, interesting you ask that because there are people in the room that I've talked to about, you know, co-owning a health plan. Um, and, um, and there are people in the room who have said they're going to develop a health plan and they've asked uh, the tenant hospitals to participate in that and and uh, we're talking to them about that and um, very excited about the prospects there. Um, similarly on the whole notion of a nonprofit foundation that provides premium support for people who can't afford it beyond the subsidies. I've talked to several of the people in the room about that both before I came as well as uh, uh, while I've been here. So you know I think there those are some uh, exciting possibilities to uh, further enhance the chances of success of uh, you know healthcare expansion, coverage expansion. Yeah, so it, a lot of the things that you're talking about are pretty creative. I mean, creative or you know, kind of early adopter type things. It, you know, from those, I guess, are, are, is that where we're headed? I mean, you're going to have to get creative to kind of survive. Yeah, I really think the the people who are creative and are first movers are the ones who will uh, probably have the most success. Now, you, everything you do creatively won't work. But if you hit, you know, something that's right, uh, or a couple of things that are right, I think that really gives you a, a, a leg up in terms of gaining some market share and and uh, helping your company be more successful. So, what's the word on the street with exchanges, just in general? I mean, as you're talking to your peers, what are what are the concerns? What are the opportunities? What, what what's kind of the thinking that's out there right now? You know, I think you heard in the you've heard in the room, um, uh, you know, just the discussion. There's a lot of negativity about it. A lot of people who are taking a wait and see approach. Some of the big, big nonprofit hospital systems are, seem to me to be taking a wait and see approach, and and um, there are others that are more progressive that are giving it a shot. And you know, one of us will be proven right, and one will be proven wrong. So we'll see how it works out. Okay. Should be an interesting couple of years. Anything that um, we haven't talked about that you would kind of make a point of, or any other trends or things that you're seeing with? Kind of the industry and there's a lot I mean you know it's it's uh, it's interesting there's a, a, a friend of mine who was head of business development for tenant um, that left last summer to go do a one-year um, uh, uh, advanced degree program at Columbia University in New York and he came back in last Friday to talk to me just about some things I was working on uh, we call it a t talent development it's sort of a talent sourcing arrangement so this guy comes back and I'm supposed to talk to him about making sure he comes back to work for us uh, and doesn't pursue something else. And it was real interesting, all the things that had happened since I, and I've talked to him since then, but all the things that had happened that I was talking to him about when he left that I hadn't really talked to him about. It's like he went away, you know, no communication and just the progress that's been made over that time period on a variety of things is very interesting. I, I was, as I was talking to him, I was like, wow, you've really, You've been gone not that long. There's been a lot of things done in the last, you know, six to nine months. So it's a very dynamic time to be working in, uh, in the space that we're in, and and um, and um, you know, I like that. It gets kind of boring if you don't have a little change. So it's good. It's all good.